I was talking to somebody today about it. You know, I again, I ended up, like, I got to do a lot of those stunts. And you can really see it if you freeze it. Like, you know, they had me on wires, and I mean, they, were, they took me as high up as the ceiling, you know, uh, in, some of those, in some of those fight sequences, and they would never let me do that now. I would never be able to do that now, you know, because, because I, I don't know what it is, I think it's insurance, it's just, right. you know, everything is so time-related. Uh, so it makes sense, but back then, which is not that long ago, but you know, it was 12, 13 years ago at this point. Um, I got to do a lot. Yeah. Great city. Hi, I'm Sarah. Thank you so much for coming. I'm really excited that you're here. Um, I was wondering what was kind of the difference between the preparation and experience of playing Bucky Barnes and playing the Winter Soldier, and which one did you like playing more? You know, it's. It's, uh, I, I mean, I always enjoy the player soldier, you know, I mean, I just, just because it was, um, he, you know, there was so much, um, you know, we haven't even really seen, like, any of the Winter Soldier story, like, when you see the Winter Soldier in Captain America Winter Soldier, it's actually, like, at the, t in, from, in my opinion, it's at the tail end of, like, his arc, because, you gotta remember, like, there's this whole time period, and he does have a storyline with Black Widow. I don't care what anybody says. Absolutely. And all that, whole, that whole thing, that whole thing, like when he is resurrected or whatever, he it's like Jason Bourne. Like he has no idea he was someone else. He was no idea he was Bucky Barnes and all that. He actually had a whole kind of life as the Winter Soldier, where he spoke, where he was more interacting, where he met Black Widow and trained her in the Red Room, and the whole thing happened. None of that we've seen. And and what happened is. The more that they use him, the more he started flashbacks, and they kind of kept brainwashing him, which is why he gets to be as more and more robotic as time went by. But you've never seen him as an actual, and that like I'd love to play one day, you know, like that 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 version of him we've never seen, you know. Um, so it was interesting to kind of, you know, I'd have to think about all of that and and get to the end, like basically figure out the ending without having the middle and the beginning. So. That was, I guess, enjoyable and challenging. Tell them we want to see it. Right. <laughs> Everybody start tweeting right now. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, I love your haircut, by the way. Um, and my question is, out of all the movies and TV shows you've ever done, what was the hardest scene for you, for you to film? And, like, not just physically, but also emotionally. Hardest scene for me to film. I mean, I, I, you know, everything in Italian was pretty difficult. I, I have to say, like I, um, there was, you know, there were different levels of, of hard. I mean, there were there were times like in some of the, you know, battle sequences in Civil War where I was like, I think I'm just gonna pass. And emotionally, Italian was really. You know, we didn't have a lot of time, and we had to keep going and going, and it just was asking for all these places. So, probably that, I guess. Thank you. I noticed that uh, you didn't say the bronze. Oh my god. <laughs> I told you I was going to talk about it. I told you. That was not a difficult <laughs> Google it. Although, that was the first, my first day on that movie. Are you serious? That was like when we filmed the first day I got there. And I was like, all right, I guess we're all Sebastian is still listening. Just out of curiosity, I mean, you know. Us boys, did you actually uh, do all those flips and stuff? There are two shots that I, uh, that entire sequence that I'm not in, and then one is the pummel horse that I did not do, oh. uh, and I could not bring my leg all the way up to here. So. All right, very good, very good. Other than that, everything else was it's just you and me. <laughs> hey. I don't know. We got this section right here. I think they're all a part of it too. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, so I also hope you're having a great time in St. Louis, and that no one's trying to get you to eat any profile pizza. By what anyone says. Oh, I went to Carmine's last night. Oh. Okay. Anyway. Um, so sort of going off the last question, uh, which role do you think was hard to prepare for Bucky and Jeff and I, Tanya? And then also, what was your favorite part about preparing for Jeff? My favorite part? Yeah. Oh God. Um. <laughs> I just, I just liked, you know, working with Margo, obviously, but like, just everybody on that movie was really, really, really cool. Like, very, very great, you know, experience. So like, even though I wasn't 
always feeling up for, you know, set was nice, you know, just, I knew, I was enjoying working with those people, and, and, you know, I became friends with a lot of them, Paul Hauser, who plays the bodyguard, you know, used to cry, I mean, he was definitely someone I, I loved working with, I couldn't keep a straight face with him <laughs> at all, and uh, so there was, there was a lot of that. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, I was wondering, this is sort of a nerdish question, of course, um, have you, like, been playing in the Marvel's, uh, universe and stuff, have you read any or, like, all the comics at all? Um, just, just all comics? <laughs> just, like, uh, well, mainly, like, for Bucky and the Civil War and all the other, like, yeah, I read, I read I read everything I could find. I mean, I you know all the way up to him becoming Captain America, and then even after that a little bit. Like, but then I haven't read some of the stuff where Falcon is Captain America. I haven't read the recent like you know Black Panther that just came out. I mean, I have there's a, there's a lot that I haven't read, but all the Ed Brubaker stuff I read. Um, you know, um, yeah, any any of those. Thank you. <laughs> Would you like to see Bucky take on the Captain America role? We might have a couple people that would. I mean, um, yeah, I would love that one day, absolutely. I, I, I don't know when that, um, you know, it would be a very different Captain America. Of course. You know? I mean, it would, you wouldn't be able to have the same Captain America as you have him now, you know, because he's a different guy, and, and again, um, th there's this issue where we got to get him to be trustworthy enough for them to give him that, you know, a, uh, responsibility. I mean, you know, to fill those shoes. And so, and those are hard shoes to fill. And so, um, you know, I think, I think it's possible one day. I, I really do. I just, I just think it has to be, has to make sense. And we might need a little more time. Gotcha. You got to get beyond infinity. Hey. And then we'll see. <laughs> Can happen. That's a fair statement. Yeah. Right. Decided we run it. Like I said, I only saw about 25 pages of that script. So that's 25 good pages. Don't ask nothing. We're gonna talk about this. Hello. Hi, my mouth is wired shut, so if you can't understand me, just ask me to repeat the question. Can you understand me? You're yes. pretty good right now. Okay, perfect. I'm just wondering if you were a chair. Who would you want to sit on you? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, I just gotta know, is talking dirty like that while your mouth is wide shut? Bro, you're on your own, man. She owned that one, I can't. She's so hard right now. She's like, oh my god. Hello. Hi, my Same name is Kimana. Um, I was wondering, you've worked with so many amazing actors and actresses. Is there any actor or actress that you'd love to work with now? Um, yeah, I would love to. Um, god, I mean, I would love to be in a Martin Scorsese movie one day, you know, or a Quentin Tarantino movie. I mean, that would be unbelievable. I would, you know. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, people like that. I wouldn't mind working with Gal Gadot. Uh, I feel like that might be fun. Yeah, yeah, um, I think we could see that working. You know, I wouldn't mind working with Natalie Borman again. You know, uh, I wouldn't mind working with Darren Aronofsky again. Um, I wouldn't mind, um... I feel this man is tortured in his sleep <laughs> by echoes of my voice. Um, yeah, it's, it's fair. Fun. It's fair. You know, uh, I'd love to do him justice, right, in some capacity, yeah. if I could. So there's definitely a lot of people. I, mean, I don't know. Keep, keep going and going, I feel like. Thank you. Thank you. Just out of curiosity, on the set of I, Tanya, was there any sort of 
animosity between you and Margot with uh, the DC Marvel households. <laughs> Margot didn't even know. <laughs> we were, I was like, like, I, I remember I, I said something to her at one point about that, and she was like, oh, I, like she didn't even know I was, <laughs> was in the Marvel movie. Oh, that's you? You're like, um, but, uh, or, and, uh, but she was, she was definitely my favorite part of Suicide Squad. Oh, yeah. Hello. DC has great characters. I mean, they do. They do. Just Marvel is currently winning the cinematic awards. Yeah. Listen, the Penguin, <laughs> Batman Returns, right? It's still. It's, it's such a great movie. It's Catwoman, isn't it? Yeah. Be honest. Shall fight for someone else I would like to work with again. Mm. Mm. Hi. Um, my Beth. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Just broke her. Don't do that. I don't have a serious question, but um, I know when you went to the Tulsa Comic Con two years ago, you were